guys, this is Scribbly again with another pen review. And today we are going to have a look at a Caveco pen. A Caveco pocket pen coming in this package. <clears throat> then you might say, well, if this is a pocket pen, why does it come in such a rather lengthy package? Good question. And I'll get back to that question later on. Thanks a lot to Caveco for sending me this little package here for review. Wanted to mention that initially. And let's now sort of like... Have a look at this Caveco Supra, as this pen is called. Let's now dig into that package that, as said, is rather lengthy for a tiny pocket pen such as this one. It comes in this uh, typical black Caveco cardboard sleeve. If you remove that one, you will get the Caveco tin that most of these Caveco pens do come in. Uh, by the way, if you empty all those contents, that does make for a very nice everyday carry item box or even a uh, pencil box or something like that. You open that one up, get a little Caveco sticker. You'll get like a little folder talking about some of the Caveco history. And then also you have uh, something, you know, like a warranty certificate in there and all of that. Um, comes with like a little cartridge, which is very nice because it gets you started right away. Uh, I think it does typically not come with these colorful converters. Uh, I think uh, Caveco threw them in here as part of the review package. I just wanted to like hold those ones into the camera real quick because Caveco does now also have these like uh, super cool converters that do come in all kinds of different colors orange, blue, and black right here. Very nice. Uh, these standard converters do not fit in that pen when it's pocket penned. But hey, the reason why the whole thing is rather lengthy is because you can, and a lot of people don't know that, and you in social networks, on, 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 in photographs and so on, you rarely see that also because most of the time the Caveco Supra is used as a pocket pen, is pictured as a pocket pen and so forth. But when you buy the pen, it actually does come with another additional brass insert. And I'll show you that. Oops, I'll show you that in the course of the review, how you insert that. You just screw it in, which actually then makes it for a full size pen, which is pretty cool because you actually have a pocket pen and a full size pen in one very neat package. But let's remove all of that for now and uh, have a look at it. This it is, the Caveco Supra. Um, if you're a little bit familiar with Caveco's lineup, there is like a pen that looks almost exactly the same. Unfortunately, I don't have one here right now. That's the Caveco Lilliput. Has the exact same, what do you want to call it? Pill shape, almost like an inflated pill. Um, uh, just, of course, that the Caveco Supra is, uh, I think, a bit longer and definitely a lot girthier, beefier, and also heavier, but does, as said, sport that exact same, you know, pill shape. That one he here is made from brass, as a matter of fact, eco-friendly brass, which Caveco gets directly from a manufacturer in southern Germany, in a town called Ulm. Uh, as said, it is basically a pill form, uh, at the top of the pen, as with the Lilliput, you have the three-syllable Caveco logo. Uh, that is sort of like laser etched or laser engraved, I do think. I don't think that it's screen printed. Maybe it's screen printed. I don't know. Um, but uh, it, it doesn't seem that uh, this would sort of like go away, fade, 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 fade away or something like that over time. Um, you then have like, we're quite likely with the same technique, laser etching or what it is, uh, Caveco Germany. It also says Caveco Supra, the name of the pen right here. That's about it. You have threads here at the back end, um, which is cool because uh, you can use those to post a cap. Um, it's a screw on cap then, as a matter of fact, which uh, unscrews with, let's see how many turns. That's one full turn now. That's two turns, three turns, three and a quarter turns for unscrewing. That's 
quite a lot. I typically do not like that, especially with pocket pens. If you want to get them ready for note taking pretty quick, then this is actually really cumbersome. With this pen here, it's a little bit different because you would, or I, when I use that pen, never unscrew the pen like this. But what I actually do is like, I unscrew the pen like this, which then goes rather quickly, right? Because like with the two hand motion, the three and a quarter turns basically become two or less turns, uh, something like that. But still be aware of the fact that it is not a very quick note taker. On top of that, something that I also don't really like is you can use the pen like this. Mind you, I have fairly large hands. Um, so if you have small hands, you can probably use the pen unposted. I, in my larger-ish, large-ish hands, can use the pen unposted for a few quick notes. However, in order for this to become a really comfortable note taker for me, I will have to post it. And then again, you have quite a lot of threads back here. And sometimes this thing jams up like that. It's not super convenient and it's certainly not a quick thing to get that back cap on here. So... You know, I mean, you see, I'm fumbling around right here. I need to get that kind of thing centered. And uh, yeah, now it grips. And uh, yeah, you know, it takes two, three twists also to get that cap back on. So now like that, you have a fantastic pen, super well balanced, great size in hand, absolutely fantastic. But you saw the disadvantage. Yeah. This is definitely a process. If you want this for a quick meeting note taker when you're out and about, you know, like jotting down a shopping list, you know, getting it out to cross items of your shopping list, you're probably better off with a Caveco Sport, which you then can post. Uh, I'll do a comparative review of the Caveco Sport and the Caveco Supra also in a bit. Um, so this is not your quick, uh, quick and dirty note taker and crossing off items from the shopping list. Just be mindful of that. If that's not your use case, right? If, if, if you use this pen as like a traveling pen, when you then in the evening or in the morning sit down with your traveler's notebooks in order to write your journal entry, then this process here. And now it worked straight away. You saw that. Then this process here, you get your thoughts ready and now you sit down for like a 10, 15 minute or whatever it may be writing session is of course no problem at all. And the pen is super sturdy, super robust, and it is very, very, very small. Uh, and I'll do a size comparison in a second. So of course, this is an absolute perfect travel companion. I just wanted to tell you, you know, it's not a quick note taker, but it's a fantastic travel companion. companion. In terms of writing implementation, First of all, you have like a slightly hourglass shaped, absolutely fantastic section, which is super comfortable to hold on to. Uh, it's quite beefy, quite girthy. So it's like very, very nice to hold on to it, like very comfortable grip, not slippery at all. And as opposed to the Caveco Sport, which has like a I think it's a number five size nib that Caveco has on those ones. This here actually, and this happens to be a fine nib right here, is a number six size nib, which is really fantastic. You have a pocket pen with a number six size nib, three syllable Caveco logo on here saying Germany since uh, 18 you know, whatever, something, can't really read it, it's too small, and some scroll work on there. Open up the pen. Very nicely, here you see the brass, what it would look like if you'd polish it up again. That's the beautiful thing with brass, obviously, that you get this fantastic patina here over time, which is really beautiful. Fills with standard um, cartridges, but now here comes the trick. There is this little thing here, this little insert if you do this it will of course now fit long standard international cartridges and of course it will now also fit those convert converters that i have just shown you and uh, there without posting the pen you have a full-size pen still your same travel pen of course now is longer as i said we'll do a size, size comparison in a bit you see the brass is very polished because i have not used the pen with that insert 
Uh, I've always used it in its pocket pen setup, which is the setup that you on social media and wherever online, uh, you know, sales pictures or whatever you may see the pen. That's the setting, you know, the pocket pen setting is the setting that you most likely come across. You'll rarely see the pen like this, which is why I explicitly wanted to show that to you. And then you have a full size pen, right? A price of the pen is 95 or 93 euro, which is, you know, a bit of an ask considering that the Caveco Sport goes for 75 euro. So it's like, I think quite a stretch of what you can ask for that pen. Eco-friendly brass. I'm, I'm not sure if this here is eco-friendly brass as well. Doesn't say it on the website. Says it for that one here. You get that insert so you can make that pen into a full size pen. So, I mean, I think, I guess it's kind of okay, but I would say it's sort of like really on the upper end of what you can actually ask for such a pen. It's not outrageous, but it's definitely also not a steal. So, I mean, in the end, of course, it's up to you. Um, you can, uh, this is quite a, you know, pen that will roll around on your desk and so forth. Of course, it's super nice when it's like in the pocket pen setup that like super pocketable, but you can also get uh, brass clips for that pen. And then you have a full size pen um, that you can also carry in your um, shirt pocket. With this insert, you do obviously get like a step here I'm wondering if there would have not been a solution where they could have had, ha, could have milled those parts in a way. I'm not an engineer, so, you know, um, keep me honest in the con comments if this is something that would not be possible. But like, I would like to see a, a way of milling that they, these two pieces could actually, these two pipes could actually screw, screw into one another in a way that they sit flush here with the barrel. So that is something that, uh, you know, maybe that's also why I never used the pen in that setup. It's it's not an issue, right? I mean, like it does not by no means hinder or hamper the functionality of that pen whatsoever. It's just an aesthetic thing. It just, you know, that step here, I can feel it, I can see it, and I just find it a bit annoying. But that's just me. Um, before we write with the pen, let's now do a size comparison to my standard size reference pen, which is a Lamy Safari. That's what it looks like capped. Uncapped. That's what it looks like. So you see, it's almost like a Lamy Safari sized pen. Um, when you have this uh, little uh, insert in here, <clears throat> let me now remove that insert again so that you can see what the pen looks like in comparison <clears throat> when it's in the my preferred setup, this uh, beautiful pocket pen setup. You see, this is like a really tiny pen. Yeah, but what you also see that it has like a quite beefy section and a quite large nib, which is fantastic. <clears throat> Writes actually really, really beautifully. Okay, and let's cap them again. That's the picture that you get. Right, last but not least, writing sample with this... Uh, you know, almost indestructible pen here. Let me zoom in just a bit. You see, pen was uncapped for quite a while and just dried in just a little bit, not too bad. Um, as you see, I can write with the pen uncapped. Kaveka Sup Kaveco Supra fine nib. Let me now cap it or post it rather, not uncapped, unposted, of course. And uh, let me do the same thing again. Much more comfortable to write with like that, obviously. Rather dry nib, which I think for a pocket pen, at least in my book, is an advantage because it will mean that it uses ink more sparingly. Uh, just a little bit of bounce in that nib. I'll see that, I see that right now that I actually try to push it a little bit. So you do get some line variation. And of course it does then also write a lot wetter, but when you write with that pen naturally, it does feel a little bit more like a nail, which I don't think is any problem. It writes actually really, really nicely. It has a very, very precise writing feel to it. 
I do really like the feeling of how this pen writes. It does write with quite a bit of feedback, which I personally also really like. It is smooth, but it is definitely feedbacky. Uh, not in a scratchy way, just in the way that like, you know, you actually feel the feedback from the paper, which I said in my book is good. It's not an absolutely spectacular nib that, you know, like you have never written with such a nib is absolutely amazing. It's not like that, but it is a really, really, really good nib. That's that with the review of this Caveco Supra that can be become a super Supra if you insert that kind of thing here. Guys, I hope uh, this was a helpful review to you and I'll see you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.